Today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast, providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space so you always know how much you get when you include an ad from Podgo. We recently joined as a member and you can too. Apply today to become a member and immediately be connected with advertisers that fit your audience. That's podgo.co at P-O-D-G-O dot C-O. Don't forget to add the two-on-one podcast in the how did you hear about Podgo section of your application. Now get ready for the rest of the episode. Just be patient, Arthur. <laughs> we have a plan. <laughs> Tahiti. You always have a plan. There's always a plan. Just one big job. Kim Kardashian in Red Dead Redemption? What? What? <laughs> Kill Micah Bell before? <laughs> what? Anyway, guys, we're back. Hockey. Ooh. Ooh, wait a minute. This is not we're, Sunday. We're so, so close. We're back to Wednesday and Sunday. Ooh. Two episodes a week, even though next week we might, or the week afterwards, we might be back to one. I mean, maybe two. Week. We might not have an episode. We yeah. don't know yet. But and we're here. Just, just before we go, can, mm-hmm. uh, can we give ourselves a round of applause for going three months without hockey and still filling the show? I think we get around. Yes. I think we get around a plus. Yeah, we did it. We did it. I mean, yeah, kind of. I mean, half of the episodes in the stretch were, you know, bizarre adventures. Hey, but, we still yeah. did it. Man, yeah, that's dated, but I love those. I Looking back on those episodes, I love them. The Star Wars one especially. I hated them. Really? Yeah. They were his idea, too. You love yeah. the Mighty Ducks, though. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I just hate watching movies that I personally don't want to watch. I'm very selfish. Oh, okay. I thought the Lego movie would have been a hit with you. It was a hit. Yeah. It was a for, for sure hit. It was. But it was probably got, my least favorite. We got. I I was pretty happy because I uh, I got you guys into a new sport. Yeah, Drive okay. to Survive was yeah. a yeah. For yeah, now we have a segment every Just time saying. there's a Grand Prix for F1. You know what's weird? There's no F1 race this weekend. Mm, I know. That's pretty odd. Yeah. Just, Upset. Then what next weekend or like after starting next weekend there's three straight? Like two at Silverstone and one in Spain? Uh, off the top of my head. I I double checked that. This but yeah. Is... They're doing back to back at Silverstone. Yeah. Which Mercedes are gonna surprise, surprise. They were probably. gonna win anyways. Um yeah, just is it the pink car? Is it the black car? I think like Red Bull's gonna make a run. No, no they're not. <laughs> Wait, we we missed a car though. Don't mm-hmm. forget about the Williams. Oh, all right. And we'll go. <laughs> say Ferrari. Don't forget about the Williams. You're going to get killed there. Like, they do not stand a chance. Guys, though, it's time for some hockey. And, I mean, to start, we've got a whole list of things here. And I guess we should start off by talking about probably the, the biggest gap between confirmation and something being broken. Not broken, but... Guys, at the end of the season, or right before the season cutoff, we knew that uh, Brandon Lemieux was going to be suspended. We have only a few days ago found out that he will be suspended. Um, and you see, I'm currently stalling because I thought two, I had screenshot it on my phone. Yeah, it was two I games to the play-in round, right? Two games I'm already dropped it. I've already dropped it. He, so he get, yeah, he gets to play the exhibition game. All right. And um, he will miss the first two games against the um, Carolina Hurricanes. He plays just like his dad. You hate him? He just can't score, though. His dad's Claude, right? <laughs> Who, his yeah, dad's Claude. Claude. That is Claude, yeah. yeah. Man, oh, that guy's hilarious. Who, Claude Lemmy or Brandon? Claude. Claude? Why if you he... go listen to some of the stories that uh, some some players have of just playing with them, it's just absolutely hilarious. I know this isn't hockey, but do you know what, what's happening tomorrow? It's a tomorrow. gameplay trail. It's the first look of gameplay of Halo Infinite. I just thought uh, I'd mention that because for some reason I screenshot it. And you know us Xbox guys. Yeah, Daniel. Get out of here, Daniel. We're going to get it, man. Like, we can up- Red Dead's on Game Pass. We love play online together. Do a heist or something. Rob a trade. Sorry. We can start Maybe we can use that this as a sponsor. We can Xbox start is hearing this. Microsoft yeah. is hearing this. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, why not? I mean, Free ad. Give us a lot of money. Right. We can uh, play ES- EASHL together. No, I'm not playing that. No. We can Halo? play Formula One together. Yeah. I'd play. That's awesome. 
But no one could pick Mercedes Benz. It's too unfair. It's not Mercedes I would just, Benz. It's like AMC Mercedes, Petronas. Mercedes AMG Petronas. We are way off track to start. Yeah. Like we mm-hmm. are way off. Okay. Yeah, we went from Brendan Lemieux to Halo to Formula One. I mean, it's a. F- I, I have you guys actually see the incident with Jonas Donskoy? Yeah, it was like yeah. I saw it. I forgot what it looked. It's very like happens. trademark Brad Marchand type of like move. Like you know, you slowly skate away Stunning. after you do it. Yeah, but instead he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a Zdeno Chara to protect him. No, so he's, he's got to face punch himself. <laughs> do you guys hear a beep or is that just me? No, I can hear that. I can hear it. It sounds like a truck's backing up. Man, I'm now in the basement. Trying to get away from the sound of the side of like the garbage trucks, and I still the can't. motorcycles. I don't think we're hearing motorcycles, but I'm sure we're going to keep hearing garbage trucks. But yeah, so talking about Brandon Lemieux, um, I, I can't even. It just feels so weird because we haven't done this in so long, criticizing player safety. So I'll, I'll throw it over to Alex since he is Mister Criticism. Like if there's something to be talked about player safety back over the season, Alex was the first one to talk about it. So yeah, go, go ahead. I'm watching the incident right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't criticized him in so long. I don't even know what else to say. He you know that feeling? That, uh, pardon? Does he have a history? Surely he does. Um, I, I can look up. Let's say I'm the, it's on right now. You know, it's definitely questionable. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, 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 there wasn't direct head contact it was definitely suspendable like he hit him like Lemieux for sure saw him coming and Don Square was looking the other way and you can argue maybe the elbow hit the head first Mm -hmm. but definitely not the shoulder I I, this is weird I don't like saying this I, I don't mind it I guess you know what's it's what sucks for you know this Don Squad? This isn't the first time a Ranger has laid him out. Uh, I believe it was Ryan Lindgren defensing for them. I think it may have been this year as well. Just completely destroyed the guy. You know, it caused a few scraps earlier. And I'm looking at the um, the incident itself now. It's such a like Don Squad cannot do anything to defend himself. Like if you look at it. Right. Lemieux can clearly see what he's doing here. Like Don is right there in the slot, and he come and and Lemieux comes from behind and just clips him there. It's so scummy. Looking at it now, that should be more than two games. I I think the issue. I forgot. What? I, no, go 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 ahead. Go ahead. I'm no. realizing. I just realized why it's only two games. Why? Why? Because it's playoffs. Oh, and remember true. the way Brian Burke puts it: two regular season games equals a playoff game. So this will be his second suspension. Um, in November 2018, uh, while he and at the time he was with the Jets, uh, Lemieux was suspend, suspended for a dangerous hit to the head of the Panthers' Vincent Trocheck, mm-hmm. and he was suspended again for two games. Jesus. Now I, I wonder if there was, if because he's riding the mid, like Donskoy's coming through the middle of the ice and his head's not look at i don't know like someone will definitely make an argument for that he should know his surroundings as he's crossing the middle of the ice i don't know if i necessarily agree with that but i know people will definitely make an argument about that because there's 500 year old hockey fans yeah it's like keeping your head up and everything but you know you didn't uh, have to raise the elbow well I, that's the question though yeah you raise the elbow um I, I don't know like the first the first angle that they showed you can't even see his elbow so then you're looking at okay where was the contact with his shoulder because you see Lemieux coming in right Don Scoy is crossing the middle of the uh, middle of the zone and you see Lemieux kind of coming in and then he kind of switched paths right he was going to go to the front of the net and he kind of shifted his body towards um towards Don Scoy. so that that's another question like mm-hmm. There's one thing to kind of just nudge the guy, but then I think because his shoulder and his elbow were, I think you can argue there was head contact there. The one problem I have is is like the thing of keeping your head up when the guy coming at you is 
coming from behind. Mm -hmm. And it's different from when you guys know the famous Bufflin hit on Mark Stone when Mark Stone is coming into the zone and blatantly has his head down and it's Dustin. But like in that case, I agree because you Mm -hmm. cannot like start entering the zone with your head down. Like that's just stupid. And and Bufflin, like that was a clean hit. He just, Mark Stone. The Buffalo signature, yeah. Yeah. But in this scenario, I mean, I, I just can't think of – and this isn't like Don Scott going for a puck. The guy is trying to go for a scoring chance. I think mean, Yancey got a shot away, and it's after the fact when you goes after him. No real defense there. Uh, we'll move on, though. I want to bring this up. So we uh, we didn't – we kind of ran out of time last episode. Somehow we spent like an hour on the awards, which might not be a good thing. We get to the heart uh, finalist, but – uh, Rocky Thompson, who has been the head coach of the Chicago Wolves over the past few years, um, the AHL team of the Vegas Golden Knights, is leaving Vegas' organization. And the reason this is significant is whenever there is a talk of great AHL coaches that might be next in line to get an NHL job, Rocky Thompson has always been at the top of that list. Now, I think it was last season – it was either in the finals or the conference finals that Chicago were eliminated. So they're a very good team. And I think it was Chris Johnson of Sportsnet said, don't be surprised to see him in San Jose. And what's funny about that is it just happens that San Jose's former head coach just happened to have ended up in Vegas. Yeah. (laughs) So it looks like San Jose are getting a bit of retribution here. Alex. Yeah, I think this is, I think this is a great, move for the for the team um i i guess he's young for a coach he's 42 Mm -hmm. former player right former player Uh, i think he spent sometimes sometime as an assistant with with uh edmonton right so i guess that's some nhl experience has head coaching experience in the CHL has head coaching experience in the AHL. And I really think, I guess this is the next kind of move for him. Now you could argue, should he be an assistant or should he be head coach? I think that's, wait a second. Is he being hired as assistant or head? Uh, nothing is official yet, but okay. um, the, just because elite prospect, just said- elite prospect has him next year as assistant coach for the San Jose Sharks. Really? Yeah, okay. so let me pull that up. But I think either way, I think it's a really good hire because I think, you know, who's their uh, head coach now, Bob Bugner? Yes. You know, do you move forward with him for the next couple of years? And then Rocky Thompson's your guy, kind of like, uh, I guess, before Sheldon Keefe, I guess, you know, DJ Smith could have been that guy. If Sheldon Keefe wasn't there, I'd imagine DJ Smith could have been the next Leafs head coach. Mm-hmm. What about you, Daniel? Um, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, like those up and coming type of coaching prospects that you want to kind of gauge, like, where is he going to go? Like when Alex mentioned, he might be an assistant coach. I think like that's the best situation right now. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not a biased comment, by the way, because I know he's the coach of the Ducks right now. But I felt the same way with Dallas Eakins when he was with the Marlies that people were like, you know, he's the next up and coming coach, make him the head coach. And what happens? He gets hired by the Oilers during like that really bad stretch, mm-hmm. and he gets like, you know, kind of bodied by their bad play. He did his best, but I think it's something where you know you have to understand where would you put these guys right away? Like, would you make him have that type of responsibility? And to be honest, like San Jose is a bit of a mess right now. That's very- uh- Sorry, quickly before you move on, just because I have the quote up here. Uh, mm-hmm. So Jesse Granger, and the, and this is the tweet that uh, Kelly McCrimmon, Vegas GM, obviously announces Rocky, Rocky Thompson will be moving on from the organization. He will be joining an NHL team. Uh, Dreger then reported uh, saying he's headed to San Jose to assist Bob Bugner, who is believed to have earned an extension. Now, this article that I'm reading from the hockeywriters.com says that uh, Doug Wilson denied that Bob Bugner has earned an extension. He has not denied that Rocky Thompson will be joining the coaching staff. Okay, so they oh. haven't confirmed it. Yeah. See, this is what's interesting about Bob Bugner because he was an assistant in San Jose. He, they called him the Brent Burns Whisperer. Then he left to go to Florida. We all know how that went. Because, you know, Florida just 
had a, had management said no help with the back end and then ah, Bobrowski and all that. And then Bugner obviously went back to San Jose. And you got to, I feel for him because you really hope he does get the job because he's, I think he's done his time. But then you clearly see you have this young coaching prospects. That you, you already have your replacement behind you. That's a bit of a yeah, it's like a chicken case. balance kind of thing where it's like, mm. you know, pro- like it's like a prove me contract where, you know, we could move forward however we like it. It was like um, Ken Hitchcock and Mike Yo, I think, on the, the Blues, I believe. Yes. Yeah. I believe so. Mike Wait, Yo, say that again? Blues. Where yeah. like they kind of gave him like a like Ken Hitchcock a contract, but like they specifically said your replacement is already on the bench. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't uh, know. For some reason, I thought how you said another coach might be. I think it's an interesting move to make, especially if he is going to be their assistant coach and saying, hey, if Bob, like Bob Bugner had what? He had about half a, not even half a year with the San Jose Sharks. Right? As not in this even. season? Like in, in relief for Pete DeBoer? Yeah, yeah. Right, he's barely right. had half a season with them. So you imagine that, okay, let's test the waters, number one, with Rocky Thompson as a, a NHL assistant. And let's test Bob Bugner with our team and see if, if that clicks next season. Because mm-hmm. I think everyone thinks that the Sharks are, this was a one-off year. Evander Kane, there's that suspension. Carlson's injury. You know, the team's just hurdle. Thomas Hurdle, I believe, was injured. I believe Logan, like it just seemed like all their big guys was get it, were getting injured. Um, you know, was it a one-off year or, you know, what is happening with that team? <laughs> right, man. Uh, San Jose. They've had some weird coaches over the past few years. You know, Todd McClellan ended up leaving. Um, I know got fired. Some people say unjustly. Same thing kind of <laughs> happened with Pete DeBoer this season for Bob Bugner, and it might happen with Bugner uh, himself. Though, guys, this is something really interesting I want to talk about here. So I see on Twitter today that good old Will Baldwin is quote tweeted something. And it's from a Bleacher Report here. I'm just gonna read you this. So, do all of you, do both of you know who Ninja is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Daniel. Yeah, of course. And for those of you who don't know, the guy's a very popular streamer. Made his living. I think like he broke out playing Fortnite, right? And I guess he got bought out for something. I, I don't know, like how exactly. I know he was on Twitch and he went to Mixer. This the whole thing, know. right? But anyway, so apparently he was bought out. So he couldn't play or so they couldn't stream. Some shenanigans like this. That doesn't matter right now. Ninja's reported buyout, and this is compared to 2020 salaries of other notable athletes. Again, this is from Bleacher Report. Um, Giannis Antetokounmpo, the NBA, 25. Former future Raptor. For, okay, <laughs> we'll do that. $25.8 million. Yeah. Bryce Harper, of course, we all know him. Former, He was a former J, right? No, uh, National National. Sorry? Former J. Is Bryce Harper not a former J? No. no. Oh, okay. the Washington I, Nationals. Am I thinking of someone else then? Josh Donaldson? Maybe. Maybe. Josh Donaldson was an MVP, wasn't he? Yes. yes. And, and so is Bryce Harper? Yes. That's why. Okay. You don't have many MVPs in Toronto, so when you have them, I should probably remember them, right? But um, you but have anyway, so Lady Bryce... Big nominees, though, right? Yeah, yeah. You have Lady oh, Big nominees. <laughs> um, so Bryce Harper uh, makes 28, sorry, $26 million. Yeah. And Ninja's buyout was $30 million. There's a and market for it. So I, I, the real question here is, so Will quote tweeted it and said, um, stop, okay, oh, no, I don't have the exact tweet. He said, please stop calling this guy an athlete. He said mm-hmm. and athlete, but I think he meant to say an athlete. Yeah. So here's no, what I want to ask you guys. Okay. Because esports is a thing. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are going to look at it and say, man, it's just video games. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have a problem? And we'll start with Alex here. Of throwing Ninja and Ante Takumpo or Patrice Bergeron, you can put whoever, whatever, let's say NBA, MLB, any sort of that. Do you have a problem throwing those guys under the same sort of umbrella of athlete? I have a little bit of a problem with it, but I, I think you need to classify someone like Ninja as maybe 
I, I don't know, an e athlete. Like I think we had right. Is that the text you sent me, Adam? Like yeah. you said, why don't we classify that as e e athletes? Because I think there is strategy. There is a lot of in certain games, right? And, and I'll give you an example. I watch a lot of Formula One YouTube videos of mm-hmm. their video game. And like some of them actually show how they do the car setup and stuff like that. Now, is it as realistic as it is it as specific as the real life? Probably not. Actually, gar- I guarantee you it's not. But mm-hmm. I think there there's a lot of thinking that goes into it and a lot of trial. That's why I haven't I don't necessarily think they should be called athletes. But I think because we've co- we've created this e-sport industry, that maybe e-athlete is a better term to use than an athlete. Mm-hmm. I think that's fair. Um, what about you, Dan? I think there's two things. Like I think the first is I agree with what you guys said about you know you have to kind of classify it like you know the e-athlete kind of thing because like um, it is something where I don't. I know that there's a lot of work that kind of goes into this. Like I've been to street fighter um, competitions, watching all of that. I know that like the amount of practice kind of goes into these things or like how the community is like. Uh, But I think the second thing is like how we kind of gauge it as well is because I think it's not a super biased perspective, but it's something that we come from where we look at hockey and it's like, yeah, these guys are athletes. This is what we watch. This is what we love. But it's something that I think we don't like pay so much attention to it. But like, you know, this other kind of community or this fan base like it's something that it's like a lot bigger than mm-hmm. than we kind of perceive it as well at the end of the day let's be frank here guys uh sports is entertainment and so are video games and i'm gonna tell you this i spend a lot more time playing video games than i do watching sports now i mm-hmm. myself replied to will saying i love trying to compare a guy who plays video games to and I, my, the example I brought up was comparing him to Patrice Bergeron, yeah. who played through a punctured lung in 2000. I'm like, Definitely you don't. Not healthy. There are not though. You can play video games with a broken leg, right? Or like, if, I, yes, like yes. even Formula One, like if you don't have the super control, you can just use a normal like Xbox one, right? Right? You know, it, it's just, again, yeah. I but think you need to have a tag on it because it's just, think, there's yes. no physical toll. That's what that's what I was gonna say. I think there's a different using the word athlete. I don't know if that's the right term to use for those specific guys, right? Because I think there is like certain games. There is a level of strategy that that comes along with it mm-hmm. to play to to be a professional streamer. If if that's what they're called, I don't know exactly what we're, what we're calling them. Um, it, it does come with like you have you have to be really good at the game. Like, it's not like, listen, I could start my own streaming channel. I'm garbage at most games I play. I'm probably not going to get the attention. Well, I think to me, there is a difference between being a streamer and yeah. being like, <laughs> yeah, right. like no, a professional. E, okay, let, why, why do we call it e-athlete? Like, I think we can all agree on that term is is yeah. an, is an well, okay term to use? Yeah, pro because I think gamer. I don't know. I've always thought it's pro gamer. That's always thought of. Pro, the pro, okay, pro gamer. I call it pro gamer. Pro gamer. Okay, we'll call it pro gamer. That's fine. But mm-hmm. I think there is like a level of strategy when you're playing UFC. When it comes to the like, I know it's like the combinations, and I think the same can be said with NHL. Like, if you watch the guys who play NHL, like the pro NHL players, NHL. Uh, EA Sports video game players like there is a level of strategy that they come up with like I don't think they're just throw the head the controller in their game and they're just like okay let's, let, let's play yeah. right? if video games were easy everyone would be in ETH would you know, right. make a living off of playing right so I think there's a level of strategy that's different like there's no phys- there's no physical component to video games but there's a there is a mental component what do you mean mental like you mean like this like the strategy, strategy wise i meant yeah. strategy wise yeah i think that's fair uh anything else you guys want to add to this little little discussion I, I, no this I is a, okay yeah. yeah this is like a little <laughs> this is one of the surprises i wanted to bring up to you that, guys. oh okay 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 yeah. that was another quiz no <laughs> the esports quiz i can't <laughs> 
Like, I'd fail. I'd fail. <laughs> like, you're going to ask me all these video games. I don't, think, I don't, fail. I don't think any of us would do very I'd, I'd have trouble coming up with a question. It's going to be biased. It's going to be Xbox questions. Yeah. I mean, why not? Why not? I saw a really funny tweet a few days ago. It was like, boys don't get mature. They just move on from Xbox to golf. And I was like, no, I'm, that's it's not funny how true that is. <laughs> All right, we're back. We're back from a bit of, bit of discourse. I think anarchy, the best part there. Um, we'll talk about some really, really good news, though. Uh, guys, Oscar Gural, Oscar Lindbaum, not Lindbergh. I made that mistake. Oscar Lindbaum, who of course is a finalist for the Hart, um, Masters in Trophy for beating cancer, kicking its ass. Shout out to him. Has just received a three-year contact contract extension from the Philadelphia Flyers. Three million dollar AAV. Good for him. That's solid. Great for him. It was yeah. great news for him. I'm so happy. What about you guys? Not too shabby. Not yeah, too shabby. Pretty good. Nine mil in the bank. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not, not too bad best. at all. Uh, can I just say, I'm on cap friendly right now. They have a 2020 playoffs countdown clock. Oh, do they? Nine days, 21 hours, 47 minutes. How are you guys going to prepare? Oh, I don't I know. I'm Red too Dead. excited. I'm too I have to excited. Red Dead Redemption too before we even start. Otherwise, suggested hab lines, <laughs> like changes every day. Yeah, why not? Yeah. But the top line's the same, and just figure out where Kotkin, I mean, Dylan, you're going. Man, six more days till that uh, the exhibition games start. That's gonna be really fun too. I may turn my phone off for that three hours. Let's, <laughs> I'll, 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 let, I'll, I'll let I'll 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 let Mike take the brunt of you. Man, the moment that game turns south, it's going to be terrible for me. I have a really bad habit of digging a hole for myself, yeah. not getting away out of it. It's just, uh, it's not not quite that fun. We'll move on, though. Um, some serious news here. Uh, we know that now, we haven't talked about this in a few weeks since the news first came out, but for sure, I mean, when, I should probably actually say what we're talking about first. So the Washington NFL team and the Edmonton CFL team, yeah. the footballs, as we yeah. all know, uh, we're, have now both confirmed that they are changing their names. Uh, we're still waiting on the Redskins. I, I almost said it. I'm sorry. We're still waiting on Washington. Uh, Ed for, like, the official name. Same with Edmonton now. For now, they're just being known as the Edmonton football team. But uh, it looked for a bit that Edmonton were going to change it. But apparently, I think uh, there are a few different players I think, that came out and said, man, you got like, this isn't right. you got to change it. Which is weird because apparently they were consulting First Nations people, and after that, we're still cool with keeping the name. But then we'll be surprised when athletes come out and start saying stuff they buckle, which is pretty scummy. I wonder if uh, if they were worried about um, the sponsors because I know that was a huge like that was a huge thing in Washington. Mm-hmm. Is that FedEx? I believe the arena sponsor said we are going to pull out if you continue using this name. Money. Who loves money? Remember, um, money. I believe his former player Jordan Tutu. Talked yeah, about it, it was where, Jordan Tutu. Yes, yeah. he didn't feel that like personally. He felt offended, but he understood like the perspective that how it offended the older generations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he, yeah, he's indigenous too, isn't Jordan? Yes, Tutu? for my yeah. name, but. Yeah. And he's been like he's been one of those really vocal players about it, right? Mm-hmm. It's nice. You want to see it change, and it continues to happen. Uh, still a lot of work to do, but uh, and it sucks that it took money to change everything. But is it surprising? No. Guys, we've been talking a lot about awards, so we're quickly we're going to save the main event of the show later on. We're going to talk about the Hart Trophy finalists. Yeah, because it's uh, every year, every year. Um, but first, guys, we have the Norris Trophy <laughs> for Defenseman of the Year finalists. Offensive um, Defenseman of the Year. Let's offensive? Just, no, it's, just, no, it's not. Let's Alex. just name defense. it that. Let's just it's name the best it. Defense. The Eric Carlson Award. The <laughs> Eric, the, anyway, our finalists. Name it the Bobby Orr Award. Oh my God! The finalists are yeah. Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators, who led his team in scoring as a defenseman. Pretty wicked. Not as good as Shea Weber. Uh, we had John Carlson of the Washington Capitals, who was having such a wicked, wicked offensive year. He was on track to have a sensational year as a, as a defenseman. And a guy who I think on the show we've agreed is the best defenseman in the league and should probably win it, Tampa Bay's Victor Hedman. Lads, how do we feel about these nominees? Daniel, start with you. 
Yeah, I like it. I think um, <laughs> there's a pretty consistent ones based on what we mentioned last time. I think, who did I add? I put Kale Makar and Shay Theodore along with yes, Victor Hedman. Did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so, yeah, Victor Hedman deserves the award. It's funny mm-hmm. that you bring that up, Daniel, because uh, now I don't remember who was hosting Hockey Central, if it was Merrick or if it was Amber, but they specifically brought up Shay Theodore. All right. Probably Merrick. Probably. It seems like a Merrick pick. It the only does. thing David Amber goes on about is the Leafs and Alex Ovechkin breaking Gretzky's record. Yeah. Guys, I think he can do it. I love David Amber so much. He can do it. He's that enthusiasm and that, that, that confidence. He's got a winning smile, too. They yeah, all do. Does. Not the Daniel smile. That's just a... It's still weird he's a dad, by the way. I, I laughed at that, like, I think one of the trade trees. He's like, oh, did I mention I was a dad? He mentioned, like, three times. <laughs> <laughs> like, you mentioned <laughs> I had a baby. He just had the yeah. Alexi Yashin deal. I almost did, like, a, like a, a worst trades in Islanders history one. But uh, for a pop quiz, uh, uh, sticking on the note of awards, we have the Selkie finalists, and it is... Typical NHL, as in it was extremely predictable. To be, eh, predictable, easy for me to say. Uh, Patrice Bergeron is, yeah. I believe, I think, I believe the number was his ninth time being nominated for the award, a record. Move on, Frank Giacelli. You rename the trophy. We have Ryan O'Reilly, last year's winner from the St. Louis Blues, reigning defending Collins my ch- um, winner as well. And Daniel's pick for the award, Sean Couturier of the Philadelphia Flyers, lads. Mark Stone. To not get nominated. He's nominated in our hearts. <laughs> not in mine. No. Kind I don't of care upsetting. about Mark Stone. <laughs> it's kind of upsetting. Uh, there's, I think there's a couple other players that we could have given, uh, could have gotten the shout. Uh, yeah, Phil Mark Deneau. Stone. Phil Deneau's another guy. I wonder, you know, when the votes come out, what the, where Phil Deneau finished. Like, I wonder if Mark Stone and Phil Deneau rounded out the top five. I would have mad, because I know Pierre LeBron, uh, like, the people who pay attention really yeah. get how good he is. Like, LeBron has, like, last year McKenzie had him in his top three. Yeah. I really do hope, but I mean, like... I have this weird feeling that Mark Stone didn't even crack the top five because he's a winger, and they gave, they, they a lot of people voted Anthony Sorelli. Who vote? Yeah, I could, I could understand. I could feel that too. Who vote the Selkie Trophy? Is it the PHWA? I believe so. Oh, uh, I called them the PH the PWHA so many times last week. I got it mixed up. Professional so Writers Hockey Association. Yes. <laughs> God dang it, um, man! I I just want Bergeron to. I know a lot of people were saying this this award is purely based on reputation, and I think, man, you just clearly don't understand how good Patrice Bergeron is. And you don't realize that it is him who allows Marshan and Pasternak to go do what they want. Like the, the disrespect people have for Patrice Bergeron pisses me off. Ryan O'Reilly, guys, I mean, how do you doubt a Conn Smythe winner? And people love Couturier. Like he's like he, he's that group of like I call them again, I don't hate analytics, but there's those group of, of like the Rachel Dorys, the Ian Tullocks. And they love a certain group of players. They love Slavin, they love Pesci, and they love Couturier. Man, and I still don't get, like, everyone loves this player. The people just keep ripping this award. Rightfully so. Like, so what, are, say, what are they saying about the award specifically? It's just a reputation thing now. Like, like they act like Bergeron shouldn't be nominated for it. Well, I, you just don't, you're not watching it. You're not watching it. I wonder if the argument it. is that even if he doesn't deserve it. Sorry, let me let me clear that up. Sorry, I'm not meaning like the the Rachel Dorries and that are saying Bergeron doesn't deserve it. Mm-hmm. But there is also like the general like Twitter group of people. Yeah, I saw really don't deserve it. Um, like the people that are like Katuri or we right. You're like really? Yeah, I stopped listening to those people. But I feel like the they have a like fresh face to it. Alex, no, you did it every time. I, Leafs I Twitter has so you on it. Has you uh, on a rager Leaf, every time. Leafs every Twitter's time. the only one that can do that to me. No one. The else worst one. Leafs Twitter, uh, by far the worst one. Like by a mile. It's not even a question. Hey, I, that's fair. You can't <laughs> even. I, you can't even argue it. You can't argue it. No, I can. Vancouver. Adam. Oh, half of how many, is in front, how many yeah, they, how <laughs> many points did William Nylander score this year? How many? I don't know. 
He sco- uh, let's pull this up right now, since you want to argue Leafs Twitter. Yeah, was, did he hit 70 yet? He was probably going to finish. Did he, uh, did he hit 30 goals? Probably. 30. I'm going to say he's He has 31 game. goals and 59 points. And there's people legitimately trying to argue to trade him because he isn't good. Okay, but how many of them are over the age of 35? <laughs> all of them. Except, yeah, all of them. How many of them are wearing sunglasses in their profile pictures on Twitter? Too many. Sun- many yeah, but the they're sunglasses. part of Leafs Twitter. They're still part of Leafs Twitter. That's the argument I'm making. Uh, anyway, 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 Selkie, Selkie. Um, okay, Selkie. Of these, of these three, who do you think should win it? Not who's going Patrice. to, who should win it? Patrice. Patrice? Jean Patrice. Couturier. Jean Couturier? All right, yeah, argue. I want to I see it. Why? Why? Prefer- because, oh, okay. Sorry. because Couturier is very much the... Like, I think, Daniel, you very much called him the MVP of the Flyers, I believe, last episode. And yeah. I, I would argue that the MVP of the Bruins is, is Bergeron. So why don't, why don't you two have a little – this is oh. going to be my key of, of getting Daniel to talk more and hopefully you'll spark up. For once, it's not going to be Alex and I arguing. I want to get it going with you two. So go ahead. I don't know. I think just for me, just that the level of consistency, I think that – He's shown that, you know, he has that excellent two-way game that can kind of anchor an offense. Um, you know, the Flyers have a good team, but they don't have the consistency or a lot of the same pieces as the Bruins, yet they were able to stay afloat, and they had that crazy run. I think that he's made his due. It's already been, what, nine years since his draft, and he's just kind of shown that he's become that elite center. I know Patrice has that track record, but... It's just something that I believe Sean Peter has like really broken out the last two years. Oh, yeah, I, he definitely. I, I think he broke. I think Sean Couture broke out, but I don't think he's hit Patrice Bergeron level yet. I think you look at what Patrice Bergeron and Adam said before. What Patrice Bergeron does for that line is. He allows Brad Marchand to look like an all-star left winger because if Patrice Bergeron's not on that line and they just throw a center in there, what does that line look like? I imagine it looks like I, I imagine it looks very different. Like, does David Pasternak score fifty goals? Like, he probably does score fifty goals, but I think I think it changes how that line works in terms of yeah, score fifty goals, but. They're losing the puck, and no one's. There's no third forward back there, and I think he does that so well, and it allows the other two guys to push forward and be themselves. Sorry, I'm not disagreeing with that because I know like he does that for the line, but it's this. Isn't it the same thing you could kind of say also of like, because like they, they move around a lot, like the same thing like Jakub Voracek, you know, who really is not at that same level, or you know, the here and there Claude Giroux, or even sometimes Michael Raffle when he's put into the top six. <laughs> yeah, I just think I think Bergeron does it at, at a level that I don't think Couturier is at yet. And I'm not saying Couturier won't hit that level. Like I think we we the the image around Sean Couturier has completely changed over the last few years. I think when he was drafted, I don't think anyone saw him being this two way defensive forward. And I think, you know what, if, if he continues working, and I think under Alain Vigneault, my guy, Alain Vigneault, this, he, could be, he could be maybe, I don't know if he'll be the next Patrice Bergeron. I'm not, I, I don't want to say that, but he, he could be th- that next you know, guy who's just consistently nominated for the Selkie Award. Mm-hmm. I just don't think he's hit that Patrice Bergeron level yet. It's kind of like the Nicholas Lidstrom of the Norris Trophy kind of era. To be fair, Lidstrom did win one at like 40. (laughs) I'm going to read you guys. I've gotten some advanced stats. Wow. Okay. Advanced stats. Let's mark this day in the calendar. So Sean Couture, his face-off percentage was 59.7. Patrice Bergeron, 57.8. Okay. But... Patrice did, in fact, have more face-off one. We want like 200 more face-off. My God. Uh, If we look at average ice time, uh, Patrice has about, uh, how long? About 1844. You know, good old uh, 1950 for Sean Couturier, though. 
Um, you want to know how many shots Sean Couture blocked this year? Only 26. How many did Patrice Bergeron block, guys? 46. Oh. That's right. How many giveaways did Bergeron have? Only a 22. How many did Sean Couture have? 36. Mm-hmm. That's right. I just want everyone to know that. That's right. That's that's. It sounds like you really like Patrice Bergeron. Really? Wow. How many times? You never, you never talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, he's so handsome. So handsome. <laughs> just, that's why he needs the award, right? Yeah, that's In why. In your you opinion, get okay. rid of you get rid of the for the selkie part and you make it you make it like that. Uh, we have three more things to talk about here, and we're gonna start talking about the Arizona Coyotes. Because man, guys, I'm I'm really on the wavelength that that John Shake is done. <laughs> Um, so this is from Craig Custins. Good old Craig. What a great name, Craig. Craig Smith, Craig Custins. Quote, hey, guys, sound, on, on Twitter, at Craig Custins. Quote, sounds like Coyotes and Taylor Hall have re-engaged in contract talks. Although its new CEO, Xavier Gutierrez, I know I've mispronounced that, I'm sorry. Um, Gutierrez? Running point on the, sorry? Gutierrez? Gutierrez? Probably. Gutierrez. Xavier Gutierrez, <laughs> running point on the. No, it's just what Adam says. It uh-huh. sounds like he's trying to say it in like a French accent. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 to be fair, I, I, I have trouble speaking English sometimes. <laughs> you know, what I mean? <laughs> you know, saying that sentence was hard. You want me to try and say Gutierrez? Yeah, yeah. Long, yeah. I do have a really bad habit. Anytime I read something that like doesn't look quite normal, not normal. That sounded terrible. Um, I try to make it sound French. Gutierrez, yeah, yeah, Gutierrez. Okay, okay. You know what? Okay, Gutierrez, let's go. Yeah, okay, so it sounds like Coyotes and Taylor are re-engaged in contract talks, although I think it's new CEO Xavier Gutierrez running point on negotiations and not GM John Chaka. Hall would be top UFA forward if he hits market. And now this is some stuff from Elliot Friedman quote tweeting um, customs. Further to this, word is there was a dinner meeting last week between Paul Coyote's owner, Alex Morello, son Alex Jr., and new COO, Xavier Gutierrez. Cheka was not present. T, um, sorry, team has declined to comment after Hall's plans, agent, uh, sorry, agent Darren Ferris, mm. said the team was, sorry, the plan was from the beginning to wait until the end of the season to begin any negotiations, and that's still the plan. Ferris will not say whether any contract offers were made, and finally, I'm told this is nothing to do with league discipline, probably in reference to the illegal phil- uh, physical testings that the Coyotes engaged in. Yep. The Barrett hated case, how I call it. That's, uh... Guys, um, this has not been a good year <laughs> to look back on for the Coyotes. They got no. worse the moment they made that big haul deal. Again, the physical testing fiasco, which results of we're still waiting for. And now it looks like the young GM is not even involved with negotiating the team's biggest free agent. Yeah, that's definitely uh, an issue. Uh, it is. That's. Yeah. It's definitely an issue. It's just red flag. It's like they don't trust them. Yeah. It, it, the thing I have with Arizona is, sorry, I'm just scratching my back. So. <laughs> 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 Uh, the thing I have with Arizona is they're they're a team who is very touchy with spending money in a way. Mm-hmm. Maybe I wonder if the owner wants to be more. I, I know this is a new owner. Um, if they want to be more involved, so the owner being there, you know, maybe makes sense. Like I can imagine that. Um, that it's like that with most teams who want to shell out a contract. Like I, I don't know what Taylor Hall would ex- what what their offer would look like, but with that size, with a size of a contract that Taylor Hall could get, I'd imagine the owner has to be somewhat involved. But for the GM not to even be at a meeting like that, where you know that is something they're going to be talking about. What does Taylor Hall want? in terms of money, in terms of term. Yeah, like the GM is involved in that. Like I, That's definitely concerning. And you have to wonder what is going on in, in terms of John Chaika. And, you know, like I, I think we talked about it 
remember I think it was Mike Fuda who had just been like who had decided not to resign uh, with Los Angeles. Yeah. And I go, listen, there might be an opening in Arizona, and that's a guy you might they might consider bringing in. What about you, Daniel? Yeah, I kind of feel too is just. I don't know. It just at first I was kind of excited for John Chaika. Like you know, he's a young guy. He uses a lot of analytics, and he's been able to kind of you know put the pieces there for the Coyotes. But I kind of just feel now that it's become a bit stagnant. And some of his remarks he's kind of made in the past. I feel like especially when it came to like Brendan Perlini and Dylan Strom, where I don't know, like it just. It's it's kind of something where like you know these were the mistakes he made of drafting these guys and then now it's he's trying to be like oh well you know there was a I, I don't know if like this was the proper quote but something about like you know kind of waiting and just you know fruit like like it was fruitless to hope that they were going to develop and then suddenly Strom breaks out um, I think he's kind of built that team where he's been a lot of under a lot of pressure like we've mentioned it before where they're a very small market they needed that yeah. name you know they take on the huge contract of Phil Kessel who had a horrible season. And this is, it's ironic because this is a team that doesn't want to spend money. And this year they were right at the cap, but I, I admit he has had a, you know, he's been pretty good with, you know, keeping Oliver Ekman Larson. Uh, the Alex Goligoski deal is not as bad. You know, he's not the same how he was in his Dallas days. The Elmerson trade, I think was a steal. Uh, getting chicken in was, was good. Jason Demare has been okay. And I think personally he's gotten lucky with the gambles he's made when it came to their goaltending. Like, these are guys that, if we talked about them three, four years ago, I wouldn't say, like, these guys are starters. Right. I also, I have a, I, I have a conspiracy theory. Oh, boy. How, how good, how well maintained is that ice in Arizona? I, I swear to God, there has to, there has to be something to do with the fact that that team has not been able to score ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I, ever. And the correlation of how crap their ice is. Like, I have no evidence, no articles, nothing. But I, I swear to God, I, I believe there must be something there. Because you cannot have Phil Castle. Yeah. He's not going to put up the numbers he did in Pittsburgh. He's not having that power Toronto. play time. But, yeah, yeah. but his best years are in Toronto. And we're in Pittsburgh. I mean, like a 90-point season. That's what I mean. And that's where he won. But he didn't capture our hearts in Pittsburgh. Okay, anyway, seriously. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, yeah. you, you can't have that. And then suddenly he falls off. Taylor Hall, when he first got there, he was a most point per game for a bit, but then just went do 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 do, just dropped off. There has yeah. to be plus. I don't know. I almost wanted to say, do you just tear everything down in Arizona? But you can't do that again. But it's like, a similar. Sorry, continue. My bad. Like they've had their medical staff. Something is wrong there because everyone get maybe it's something to do more with the ice. That like everyone is hurt there all the time. Yeah. Just a, a couple points. Mm-hmm. In terms of what Daniel was talking about before with the team he has, do you think, because I think this is kind of my perception too when I look at Arizona, is that you look at the players they have um, and not bad at all, right? Like I think they have, if you look at it on paper, or you take each player individually, I think they have a, they have a, a good group of players, but it just doesn't seem to be working on the ice. Yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't click. Like, I, I think he's built a team that on maybe necessarily on paper and looking at each player individually works, but when you put it all together on paper and on the ice, it doesn't seem to be clicking. Yeah, it's like you make a bunch of great moves in an HL20. And if for some reason you start off 0-10 in your year, you're like, well, crap. Um, yeah. like the Yotes, they're, they're an, always an interesting team. They, like Somehow. Somehow. Um, you know what? They, they have a disappointing year from Clayton Keller when he gets that extension. People love that guy. Um, they tried forever to get Derek Stefan. He yeah. hasn't been lights out. Jarmerson, the, like he is older, yes, but the moment he got there, he hasn't been the same. Um, talk about injuries. Jacob Chickering's a great defenseman. Oh boy, can he just not get it going there? And Oliver Ekman Larson, that poor man. Yeah, I don't want him to be like Shane Doan. Get out of there, man. Yeah, just going back to what you said before about tearing it all down. 
when you look at the team, don't you look at them in a not? They're not in the exact same situation. Obviously, this the the ownership in the team I'm about I'm about to bring up is is absolutely just it's a tire fire. Mm-hmm. But the way that they're built in the situation that they're in, doesn't this remind you a little bit of Buffalo? And how the hell do you tear this down? Yeah, it's similar yeah. to it. Or like, like there's a lot have, of like young guys you want to kind of wait on to yeah. see. You know, it's a bit of a feeler going. Okay, let's see what they could actually be. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we'll move on from the Yotes. Um, okay. The NBA. They're yeah. Decent. They're decent. Um, they've been fun to look at with their bubble stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, different sort of phases in that. They're coming back. When are the NBA coming back? Same time. I think they come back the day before uh, the NHL. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they start uh, on the Friday. Mm-hmm. Guys, what do we want to talk about when it comes to the NBA? Because no, I nothing. see them on the notes. But yeah, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. So yesterday, uh-huh. both the NHL and the NBA came out with their updated numbers for um, uh, last right. yeah. week. I believe it's now been o- just over a week for the NHL, and there's been two new positive uh, COVID tests, which – I mean, uh, listen, like, because of the situation that the players were in, in terms of, sure, they, they can say they were quarantined. Were they actually quarantined is a different question. Now that we're at two and, you know, it looks like they're following the rules, I think that's a, a great start. And the NBA has come out and said there's been zero new cases. There's been zero new cases since they've been in the bubble. And, yeah, I know it's only been a week. But... Ooh. But I, I, but but I think that that's a really that's a really big positive, um, and, and and they're really following. The players seem to be following the rules, and those who aren't following the rules are are clearly being dealt with. Uh, I think last week there were two players, uh, Richon Holmes, uh, Sacramento Kings center, who walked just across the line to go get Uber Eats. Or DoorDash, and because what? So I was just whispering. So my dog's yeah. broken. I just whispered, "One idiot." Yeah, and they and <laughs> McDonald's, just because I believe, he, right? Just be. I I don't know which one it was, but just because he crossed the line, you know, I believe it's a ten day quarantine in the NBA. Um, the other guy was Bruno Cabo Cabo the Over Raptors, who, great. The, the guy who's two years away from being two years away. Now he's ten days away from being ten days away. Oh, um, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, so, and the NBA said, "Hey, ten day quarantine, right?" So, uh, following the rules, they they have all the proce- procedures in place. Let's just hope uh, that it continues down this path for both the uh, NHL and the NBA. I know the NHL is. I think they go to the hub cities on Friday. Mm-hmm. So let's keep it up, NHL and NBA players. Mm-hmm. I think that's good. Everyone be be safe. Yeah. Don't ruin hockey for me, please, or any of us. We love you. We love hockey. Um, guys, I think, well, we, we, we'll talk about camp a little later, but it's time for the main event, Ray Ding Ding. Yeah. We really uh, need a bell. The Coyotes weren't the main event. Out of yelling God. about the heart. No world. Okay, so we have the the heart finalist now. The heart is the MVP voted upon by the Pro Hockey Riders Association, as opposed to the Ted Lindsay, which is voted upon by the NHLPA. The one that should matter, but we don't care about because the media doesn't want us to. That's a bit mean. Still, um, the finalists are actually the exact same as the Ted Lindsay, but uh, they always create more controversy. From the Edmonton Oilers, your scoring leader this year, Leon Drysidel. From the Colorado Avalanche, Nathan McKinnon. Nathan McKinnon. As I say, I have a smile on my face. If you want to see that smile, check out the YouTube version of the show for a visual <laughs> There we go. <laughs> check out the plug-in. YouTube page. Get that yes. plug in, boys. Let's go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Colorado. Uh, Nathan McKinnon, pretty good player. Uh, and our Tammy Panarin from the New York Rangers, who had some pretty underwhelming line mates, but really proved why he's the finalist by uh, carrying them all year long. Now, before we go, uh, get going here. I have two tweets to read from, uh, from Dmitry Filipovich, the king of mm-hmm. Twitter, in my opinion. Quote, he'll fall short of the MVP again for a third straight year, but my God, Nathan McKinnon's 82-game pace. 
42 goals, 111 points, 378 shots on goal, 656 attempts, plus 20 penalty differential. My boy, clean player. That's why you should win the Lady Bank. Uh, 10 goals and 14 assists in 14 games. Someone trying to call me right now. God damn it. 10 goals and 14 assists in 14 game stretch without Ranton and, and Landis Cobb. My God. And then we have our Tammy Panarin. Led the league in scoring... Sorry, this is, again, from Dimfib. Our Tammy Panarin was decent this season. Led the league in 5v5 scoring. My God. Ryan Stroh and Jesper Fast were most common line mates. On the AI 5v5, Rangers were up 75-38 to 38 in the 1,079 minutes. Off, sorry, off ice... At 5v5, Rangers down 105 to 75 in about 2,000 minutes. That means when um, Panarin was off the ice. After Christmas break, 50 points in 33 games. That is the lead in the league. Guys. Just give it to Nathan. And then Leon Dreisaitl. Give it to Nathan McKinnick. Yeah. Well, we know, yeah. yeah. And then Leon Dreisaitl in the league. I, the thing I, is, if Leon Dreisaitl wins it, I wouldn't be mad. But I want Nathan yeah. McKinnon to win. So, and again, I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm just going to get one more thing up here. I'm going to get the heart trophy definition up. Okay. So, so as we can uh, yeah. make this clear. So okay. quickly before Adam says that, Adam is about to go off on the heart trophy. Okay. So the heart trophy, originally known as the heart trophy, okay, sorry, the heart memorial. Originally <laughs> the heart known trophy known as the heart trophy. Is awarded annually to the quote, Player judged most valuable to his team in the NHL. That's okay. such a weird definition because it sounds like each team should have their own heart trophy winner. Yeah, oh, don't, don't do this like we did with the Master Ten. Anyway, I'm just saying it's the way it's defined, right? Like the way it's defined, it's just an odd okay. way of defining a trophy. So I've I've closed my notes. I just have the Zoom call open now. All right, let me just give a stretch here. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, lads. If if the Oilers, this is how I'm going to judge the MVP. If the Oilers didn't have Leon Dreisaitl, what are they? Uh, they were what they were last year. Okay. No. The answer, is Daniel, Daniel, what's your answer? What are they without Dreisaitl? I don't know, because you got to factor in, uh, you know, James Neal came in. Because <laughs> yeah, James Neal um, was so powerful. Yeah. Um, oh. Um, yeah. You know, they've been so yeah. Like without McDavid, too, they've been left for dead. Sorry, they would be left for dead without Drysidel. Without Drysidel, well, I mean, like if you take out Drysidel and McDavid, but that's the question. Yeah, without, that's why I don't like when you nominate both both okay. players from the team. Right, that's All my right. issue. I think with big okay without Drys, I think Big David would still have an explosive year, but they wouldn't have the structure. I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They have the pinnacle and something fun to watch, which right. is Connor McDavid, but they wouldn't have the structure along the lines to kind of like have that trickle down effect to keep things consistent. Oh, yeah, that that was perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, by the way, I'm, I'm, like this season, let's pretend they don't have them. Okay. Okay. This season, what are so the point here is Edmonton still have Connor McDavid, who's yeah. the best player in the world, by the way. So right there and then Dreisaitl is not the MVP of his own team. So that should just throw him out of this whole competition. But for the year. But the, 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 the question is, is for this year. Not, like if we, ha- if we asked right now, the three of us, who the best player in the NHL is, and, and legitimately, not, don't say Nathan McKinnon, it's Connor McDavid. Yeah, it's Connor. Right. But, Just because he didn't have his sorry, go, 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 go. But I think that we know, but I don't think we necessarily saw the best of Connor McDavid simply because, and I explained because he missed a group of games. I, I, I'm sorry, a bunch of games. But when Connor wasn't there, Leon stepped up. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is the thing I, I'm going to say about the Oilers. Still this year, despite the injuries, mm-hmm. Leon's gonna Leon's won the R. He's won the scoring title. Yeah, he's not better than McDavid. Even this year, I'm in no. I'm not gonna accept anyone trying to tell me Drysdale is better than McDavid. That's not true. Okay. And then I look at these other two this season because of their injury problems. 
Mm-hmm. If you don't have Nathan McKinnon, yeah. the Avs are screwed. Correct. If you look at the Rangers and you don't have Artemi Panarin, you are you're 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 you're, not, you're screwed. You Absolutely. really are. Oh, I agree with you 100. Hmm. percent By the way, um, impressive for Mika considering he's a winger and he's nominated. That doesn't happen very often. Mm-hmm. I have like my biggest problem. We'll focus on the Oilers for now before we go on to Mika and that. Mm-hmm. Mika, sorry. Artemi, Artemi. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm like, like, wait, Mika Zibetajev's a center. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I meant, did I say the impressive thing about Mika being up? Yeah. Sorry, I meant the impressive thing about That's being okay. up. I know, I was shocked too. Is that he's a winger. Mika is a center. Jesus Christ. How did I forget that? And for some reason, Rangers fans thought he was going to win the Maurice Richard of the season finish. He's not a French no. Anyway, so we'll, we'll focus on, on the Edmonton point. Yeah. I don't understand how you put someone up for MVP – even if McDavid missed time, when Leon's not the most valuable member of the team this year. I, 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 I know so he sure. led your thing in scoring even mm-hmm. when Connor was hurt, but man, it's, it's Connor. I know. I think what their argument is, and I don't know if I necessarily agree with it, is I think Leon was put in a situation. Now, now if we imagine if it's the opposite way around, I think this would still be their argument that – Connor was put in the situation to be the MVP because Leon missed games. That's an argument they would make. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again? If Leon missed games, they would argue that Connor McDavid was put in a better situation than he already is to be the MVP. That's Think about it. when Connor McDavid puts up 100 points on the Edmonton Oilers who don't make the playoffs, he's, your MV, he's the league MVP. I don't care what you say. Mm-hmm. Right, like that team. Drysaitel wasn't Drysaitel when when that was going on. Mm-hmm. I think their argument is that because Connor McDavid missed a, a, a chunk of games, he only played he was, seven less games than make than he only played seven. I thought he games missed ten. Though. I thought he missed ten games. Uh, was it so, se- was it seven games and he put up fourteen points? I think he. So Leon played yeah. seventy one points. Sorry, he played seventy one games. games. Connor sixty four. Right. So when he, yeah. he only played seven less games. And no, I I get. I'm just I get. Like, I'm just telling you what their argument. I don't agree with it. I'm just telling you what the argument is. Mm, no, no, yeah, no, no. I'm saying yeah. I don't right? buy the and, yeah. and in that seven, in those seven games, he put up fourteen points. And what they're saying is that he was put in the situation to be their MVP because Connor McDavid missed games. That's uh-huh. what, the, and I don't agree with it. I think, I think, and I, and I think Daniel, uh, Daniel, do you think Nathan McKinnon should win the MVP? Yes. Right. And, and I think because you look at what situation Nathan McKinnon was put in, in, yes, Landeskog missed time at some point, Rantanen missed time at some point, both of them missed time at some point, uh, and then Kaji missed time. Like, uh, these aren't, it, like and those were his line mates, right? I think it's hard. I think it's hard not to give it to him. But I think because Leon Draisaitl won the Art Ross, that's what I, I don't agree with it. I just think that's what their argument would be for a big argument for would be for that too. Is that he mm-hmm. won the Art Ross and he scored two points per game while McDavid was out? Mm-hmm. Uh, what about you, Dan? Yeah, it's like it's kind of like the same argument I mentioned before. Where for me, I mean, I'm all in for Nathan McKinnon, but it's not a kind of like a whole kind of, you know, that's just him and that's it. Like I, I have to respect Leon Draisaitl's season. Mm-hmm. That, it, it, yeah, yeah. Sorry, like he was, you know, like you know, his scoring pace or what he's been able to do as a player individually. Like it's just kind of something that uh, I, I know I like to look at like. I don't know, like I, I think I brought it up last episode where I also mentioned like you know we didn't think about David Pasternak at all, but it's also him too. Like you know it's it's like he's like a system guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the argument I would make for David Pasternak, why I wouldn't put him up there, is because who is the MVP of that line? Mm-hmm. Adam brought up before Patrice Bergeron's the MVP of that line. I think a lot of people would argue P- David Pasternak is just because of his scoring ability uh, would put him up there. Now, I have a question specifically for Daniel because he would know this best. And I don't remember what year this was. It's in the 2000s. 
Corey Perry wins the heart. Yeah. Getzlav, 2011. Getzlav is injured for mm-hmm. most of the year, right? Yeah. Is that a similar situation to what went on here? Um, that if it wasn't – if if Getzlav was playing, would we see a different result that year? Oh, I'm going to talk to you, DB, for you guys. I think okay. in a sense maybe like – because like that was still we still have to remember like Bobby Ryan still put up seventy one points that season. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. They still had Timo Solani, Saku Kobe was still pretty solid. Like that was don't, a don't contending team. Don't mention him. <laughs> okay. um, that was Saku Kobe. Oh, no, I can't mention Saku Kobe and oh. Anaheim in the same conversation. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it just you know I think it was different circumstances where you know like. They are, you know, I, as much as I love those guys, you know, they're not generational talents mm-hmm. that, you know, McDavid is or, you know, arguably Dreisaitl is. But, you know, Corey Perry won it based on, you know, he did carry his line really well. Um, you know, he finished with the market, uh, the Maurice Rocket Burchard Trophy as well. I think he had 98 points that season. Okay. Uh, and this is 0 to 10 11? Yes. Uh, 90, yeah, 98 points, 50 goals. Yeah. So, and Getzlav didn't play at all that year. Is that what the he didn't play like? Yeah, he he got injured and he missed like the last portion of the season and the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, so I it might be like in a way similar to yeah. I I thought about that as well. Yeah, because that was like I think now that that we're talking about it, the situation it's it seems like you know that's a very. Um, somewhat of a similar situation that like Corey Perry. Yes, I know Bobby Ryan was there, but. Corey Perry and Ryan Getzlav, those were your were your uh, guys, right? At that mm-hmm. time, yeah. So you have to look at and say, listen, you know, it seems like a very similar situation in terms of what happened in Edmonton. Where, like one guy breaks out, yeah. Or the other, I guess, in this region, also your starter centerman is yeah. out for long term. B- before we move on quickly, I think there's a couple other like there's for me. When I you read that definition out loud, you know there's a guy who didn't even get nominated that I think would argue would deserve the nomination. And, Is and it the goalie? It's Connor Hellebuck. Not Mackenzie it's, Blackwood. I'm kidding. No, no I wish. <laughs> it, it, it's absolutely Connor Hellebuck, and and I don't think we're ever gonna like. It's gonna be a long time until we see a goalie get uh, even a heart nomination because of the way the goalie, um, the the games played for goalie is moving but man like that guy is stood on his head for that team like yes okay mm-hmm. i get their front they have patrick liney shifley ehlers and a couple other guys and you know josh morris he took a huge step forward this year same with neil Pionk. like i think i was talking about last episode but man if there was no connor hellebuck what the hell is that team? I agree, yeah. The victims of many 7-6 losses. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. Go on my Twitter. You'll see how I feel about Hellebuck. He should so win it. Like, like to put up those Vezda numbers with that type of defensive core is astonishing. Yeah. yeah. Goalies don't get respect. They just don't. It took Except Jose nine... Theodore. Hmm? Jose Theodore. He won the heart and the Vezda. Yeah. yeah Price won 2002? The uh, yeah. yeah, you know, Outside. you know, who else, you know yeah. who else won the heart one year? You Gary want to know Price. who won the Lou Marsh, the Jennings, the Vesna, the Hart, and the Lindsay in the What's same the year? What's the Lou Marsh award for? Carey Price. It's the Canadian Athlete of the Year. Oh um, yes, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Bianca won it. This yeah, yeah. I yeah. forgot. Okay. That's right. I said Neil Pionk. Sorry. <laughs> no, it took Price having a nine thirty three to win it. The Lou like, Marsh. Goalie is your arguably your most like important position. Wait, which sorry, which award? The Hart or the huh? Lou Marsh Award? Lou Marsh, I believe. Wait, 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 wait. You said it took Price a nine thirty three to win it, and I don't know if you're talking about the oh, Hart. Oh, the Hart, yeah. Oh, the Hart, okay. Well, I mean, like the whole extravagancy of it was like, yeah, give this guy yeah, the. Yeah. I don't know if they would count was if he won it fourteen or fifteen the technical. I mean, I think it was the fifteen for Lou Marsh because if you go to like twenty fourteen, he won the gold medal, right? But. I mean, I put that 2014 playoff run in there too. Well, but you know, we'll, we'll go to our next guy. Let me just keep gushing about the man. Um, we'll go to Timmy Panarin, who is a god. 
mm-hmm. on skates. He is yeah. so good. Man, he is a game breaker winger, which you don't, I mean, off the top of my head, I can think of a few game breaking wingers. I think Ovechkin, I think Panarin, and I can't, like no one else is really, really standing out. I know Mitch is great. Patrick but Kane. Like, sorry? Patrick Kane. Patrick Kane is a game breaker. Yep. Yep. And I can't think of I don't think I put Mitch David in Pasternak. There right now. David Pasternak, yeah. Wait, who wouldn't you put there? I wouldn't put necessarily at the moment Mitch Marner on that game-breaking list at the moment. Yeah. Like, there are a few of them that can be in that conversation. And, and Terry Panarin has – I remember when, when he signed that deal in the summer, a lot of people were like, that's a, that's a lot of money. But all of a sudden you put him on a big stage like New York. Yeah. And you put some – I was his, like like that tweet from Phil Povich mentioned, he has line mates like Jesper Foss most of the time. But then when he does get to play with Mika or Tony D'Angelo, on the, and I was talking to Mike about this, the biggest player and fan in the world, that when you get those guys on the power play, all of a sudden, or an odd line change, all of a sudden Mika, ha- sorry, not Mika, um, all of a sudden Artemi Panarin has something to work with yeah. and all respects to, um, to Columbus. But again, you made the joke last week. Their only offensive weapon is really Cam Atkinson and very young center Pierre Luc Dubois. Yep. So I think there's a really, as much as I love making fun of Mike and the Rangers, um, Panarin has a very good shot because without them, so without Breadman, I don't know what the Rangers quite look like. You can argue Shostarkin and what he did for them, but. They're like a rebuild, to be honest, <laughs> like the way their offense is looking. Right, man. man. Like, other than that first line, yeah, part of that second line, I don't think. Like, I think we talked about Ryan Stroman. You know, he it looks like he took that. His resurgence. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's his resurgence after that Eberle trade. But, um, yeah, it just seemed like it was kind of stuck there after yeah. that first line. I mean, that rebuild is looking so sweet. <laughs> Yeah. Like it always was, but then signing Panar, it's kind of like the same as the Leafs one. You have all these good young players. Yeah, like none of them have like Mika's obviously taken the step mm-hmm. um, back. From, remember when he was a son, but then bringing Derek for sorry, I remember that trade. Yep, man, that was something else. Rough. You know, like, but I mean, I mean, really, I think you can you can say if Panarin wins it, I, I I'd be very okay with that. What about you two? Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be upset. I think. It fits, mm-hmm. it, it fits the same mold that we've been talking about for in a similar way to Nathan McKinnon in terms of not always p- being able to play with the best of players mm-hmm. and still putting up points. I, I kind of feel that too. It just for me, I don't know. I'm, I'm still like, like I'm, I'm all in on Nathan McKinnon, and but I wouldn't be mad if Leon Dreisel wins it. It just, I don't know, I have like a gut feeling where. If I see Panarin win it, based on how, like, you know, this is no insult to the Rangers, but just how they kind of performed this year. Yeah. I just kind of feel he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't elevate the same way. Uh, <laughs> see, I, I, for me, it's, it's difficult to say that because, and, and I, Adam and I have kind of had this discussion. The more I look at the team and the more I think about it and watch the, watch them play, Mika Zabinijad is a very good player. I, I don't think any of us would argue he's not a good player. But when he plays with Artemi Panarin, he is a very different player. But I think the question is how often does he play? This is the one I wish I had Mike on to be like, yo, man, how often does I he play? I thought they played a lot together. Am I so wrong? Apparently, yeah, his center is usually Ryan Strom, right? Which is hilarious. <laughs> Um, by the way, I didn't realize Panarin has already played 27 playoff games, which, like, you think it's Panarin. He's only been in the league. This is his fifth year, which is hilarious. Um, and yet, 95 points in less than 70 games. Guy's wicked nice. The guy is nasty to look at. Calder Trophy. The man who stole McDavid's Calder. Um, and we'll, and McDavid we'll was injured that year. Oh, yeah, that was the year he broke his collarbone and was yeah. still playing per game because he's nasty. I was when he was playing with... Um, that's when – who was his line mate? It was like Pouliot and um, the first overall was a total – Yakupov. It was Yakupov and like Benoit Pouliot that were his line mates, and he was that wicked good. 
I love Narrated, who was it? It was like I'm an EC Moth and Kane. Yeah, that sounds about well, Patty Kane's pretty wicked. Yeah. Patty Kane's pretty wicked. What was he with Taves? Because then didn't after like Panarin left, like the best Taves had to work with because they don't play him. No, it was like because it was still remember it was still Hosa is Taves Hosa and I remember somebody they put Andrew Brandon Shaw on the Brandon first Saad, one. Brandon yeah, Saad. then they how about Brandon Saad? That's they traded name. they traded Panarin to get back Brandon Saad. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. where's he? Where's that guy playing? He, oh, really? Now he's on the first line. He's Wait, back with Taves. Nice. When Kane and, when Kane and Taves are like, yeah, can we have Saad back? You think when they saw that they dealt Panarin, they were like, psych? Please? And then, okay, we'll finish off talking about the man, the myth, the legend, Nathan McKinnon. But uh, but we've talked we we we've all talked a lot agreed, about him. We've we've all agreed that Nathan McKinnon wins. We know why, right? We, I I'd like to understand, and maybe I'm just I'm, a, I'm this I'm a this team hater because of the garbage that they produce. Can someone convince me why Jack Eichel should be a Hart Trophy finalist? Well, hold, hold on, we'll get to we'll get to Jack. Let's just give me like a minute, okay? Like, to just talk about to talk about Nathan McKinnon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've given we've given you hours to talk about. I'm exhausted myself with him already. All he I wins it. There's this, this is a third straight year when the guy's just gonna miss out on hundred points. Yeah, for okay. Yeah, I go. Boy, it's 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 easy why I didn't get it. Um, they didn't make the playoffs. And unfortunately, in this league, um, it doesn't matter, like where it sorry it matters where your team is in the playoffs of it. Okay. Sorry, like in the standings, yeah. Instead of just seeing how valuable you really are, but but Eichel should be. But why? I, I, think I don't not. think he's done enough. I, I look at I look at Drysidle. I look at McDavid. I look at McKinnon. I look at Panarin. I look at Hellebuck. Mm-hmm. And look at what they how they've propelled their team into that into sure. If you don't like, it's not even the playoffs. It's just how they've helped their team so much. And I look at Jack Eichel, and they'd still be garbage without Jack Eichel. They're garbage with Jack Eichel. He happens to just score points, and they're going to be garbage without him. Well, they finished, what, 25th? Because, yeah, they were the last team to, um, to miss out. Yeah. And I look at him, and I'm like, okay, so he had 30. He was going to score 40 by the time season ends. He was at 78, 10 points over a point per game. And he stops them from being in – I was about to say embarrassingly bad, but they kind of already were. I still think you have to respect when a player can do what he did given sure. the circumstance when the second – like it was a Lobson who was just probably – I don't exactly know when he was playing with you. He wasn't playing with Skinner for some reason. No, but, they split them. Which is dumb. Just put them together and give Skinner the puck. That's all you have to They do. don't have any depth. That's why they had to do something. Yeah, like this is all – Jack, his best his best line is we talk about scoring the differential between Andre Burakovsky and Nathan McKinnon, but I'm pretty sure the gap between Eichel and um why is he, hockey's been gone for so long I forget every player's name. Olofsson. Him and Olofsson. Reinhardt. Oh, the Reinhardt. gap between him and Reinhardt. I'm gonna get up Buffalo scoring and, and, and just kinda compare. I just don't see the argument to be made for Eichel in the top three. Scoring. Not do. yet, I think. Like he's working there, but I don't think yet. Man, I think you guys are being harsh. He had a a thirty eight point cushion on Sam Reinhardt uh, for points themselves, and had a fourteen goal lead on him. Okay, so who would you take out of the top three right now? Oh, I wouldn't give him a finalist vote, but I think he should be top right. five. Top five. Okay. Top five. So who's I four? Think Jack who's four or five? is more important to his team than Leon Drysidel is. Mm. Because you still have McDavid. You have the best player in the world. And if okay, you take but, away Jack, if you, okay, you but if you super... take away Connor McDavid, what happens? You still have Leon Drysidel, right? It's so like, then that, yeah. that get, then then what? That then that defeats the purpose. It you, they cancel each other out. Then that was like two thousand, like early two thousand tens, where. Uh, Based on injuries, Malkin and Crosby kept switching off in the lineup. Don't try and compare Malkin and Crosby to these two. They've actually won something. Don't do that. No. I mean, like, in terms of skill level. You don't think so? 
I no, because Malkin from the offset was wicked. It took Dry Sider. It's impressive. The, Dry Sider deserves his own award from somehow managing to not be ruined by the Oilers. He was just that good. <laughs> but yeah. if it's my top five ballot, I'm going Mac. I'm going okay. the bread man. Yeah. Connor's going to be up there, okay. as in hella buck. Eichel's going to be up there as well. Okay. And I don't quite know who I'd put fifth, but I don't want. So I, was, Ma- I just neither, don't want Dry So up neither there. of McDavid or Dry would be in your top five. I'd 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 probably bring it down between because Adam, here's don't the say Thomas Tatar. Don't say Thomas oh, Tatar. No, no, no. Because here's the big issue this league has is that Sidney Crosby should have so many more heart trophies. Was, <laughs> and he's like it's it's kinda of, it almost is the same situation that because he plays a Malkin, there's always that sort of like takeaway. Like the same with Connor. The year he won the Lindsay he didn't win the heart, he should be yeah. up there. I just, I really, I really do think Eichel deserves to be higher on the pecking order for the heart than Dry Saddle does. I'm going to die on that, though. And I hate Buffalo as much as you guys do. I, I thought they were going to make the playoffs this year, and I was also wrong. I didn't mind them when they had Ryan Miller. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know we were going back 10 years, Dave. And I, I appreciate when England were the crown jewel of this world and the sun never uh, on the British Empire, but that was a lifetime ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when Ryan Miller was good? He's still good. I don't talk about in in the limited amount of games. He's been pretty good. All right. <laughs> um. Well, um. There was something I wanted to bring up, but I can't. It's it's escaped me. All right, lads. Um. I do think that is everything. You want to bring up training camp? Oh yeah, I did, didn't I? Yeah, there's oh, a couple yeah. of things I'd like to talk about. Well, guys. Um, we started with the Habs last week, so why don't we start with Toronto? And that, um, Alex, what what do you want to bring up? And quick question: is, is any of it have to do with the nuclear line? Because I do want to ask you about that. Actually, gonna... no. Surprisingly, I completely forgot about that. Oh, really? Because they won't stop posting about it online. <laughs> I think that's absolute, absolutely hilarious. They knew what they were doing. They they, oh, they knew exactly what they were doing. Um, no, I I want because I had. Um, I was talking to someone about Freddie Anderson and uh, you know usually his first month of the season is a bit Mm -hmm. wishy-washy if you go back and look at his October numbers and now that he's had the like a pretty much an off season which it's only going to be like four months am I worried about Freddie Anderson and my answer to you is going to be no um and, and I guess, yeah, I guess we'll bring it back to the nuclear line. He, The way Sheldon Keefe has set up these inter-squad games, I find is quite interesting. Um, he's not putting the best players with the all the best players with, with all the best players. He's putting the best first line, again, and on the other team is the best um, defensive pairing and the best goalie. So Tavares, Ma- Tavares Matthews, and Marner, which is the nuclear line, is shooting uh, against Freddie Anderson, and I think that I think that will I think that will help him. Like that that's going to get him started. Like everyone's talking about how he's getting scorched in practice right now, and yeah, like it's it's training camp. Get over it. I know they just want something to talk about, but get over it for ten seconds. Like my God, we have hockey in a week. If the, if he does this against Montreal the first game and he does this against Columbus game one, yeah, maybe we're gonna have an issue. But it's training camp, right? So get over yourself. Um, and I, I want to talk about Nick Robertson. I feel like we haven't talked about. Yeah, Nick I was gonna Robertson bring that up. That one, yeah. Um, and I think he's looked really good in training camp. And and then the question comes that. Yes, the playoffs are a different game. And, and actually, I had this discussion with someone today, too. The, the, I think the Leafs have started to get an advantage the more I think about it over Columbus because it's, it's such a different playoff. Usually, we go into the playoffs. You've played 82 games. You're tired. And the playoffs are – you get down and dirty. Now, everybody is fresh, absolutely fresh. Right now they're doing the training camp, trying to get them back up to game speed because they're they probably haven't been skating as much or they're not playing game pace skate. They're not skating at game pace, but I think they have because of these four months, it's given them a 
breath a breath of fresh air finally and i think this playoff is going to be very interesting to watch because yes it's going to be rough and dirty and all the old things but players aren't going to be as tired because they're all like brand spanking new so i think maybe that's an argument to say nick robertson could be in the lineup but i don't know like i'd let maybe i'd like to see him in the montreal game I know right now he's been taking that third line spot uh, where I believe Engvall was playing. Yeah, he was scratched uh, the last practice. It was uh, Engvall, Engvall, Kerfoot, Kapanen. I'd like I- I'd love to see that in the first game in that game against Montreal and see how he plays. So, but he's looked he looks really good. My last thing before we get to Montreal, it's not necessarily training camp related, and I know this is and. There's the they've changed just for this year the dress code or for this playoff. If you're a Leafs fan and you try to convince me the Leafs lose because of their dress code, don't even talk to me. Don't even talk to me. Close your typewriter, throw it out the window. I don't care what you do with your 500 year old whatever. I don't want to hear it. That's got to be the stupidest thing I'd, I'd ever heard. I, I, heard it, I heard it on the, the radio today that people were, are going to come out with this excuse. Oh, I, if you, if, like anything to make up a story, you know. How is how they dress to walk in the, in the arena have any correlation to how they play on the ice at you the age funny? of 22 years old? You know, that's funny. That's a Don Cherry uh, of course it argument. is. Argument. Um, I remember uh, at the World Juniors where uh, he Listen. complained where uh, all the Canadian players came off the team bus in their suits. He's like, oh, look how you know dapper they look. They're ready to play. And then he showed the American team where they had the team jackets and they were wearing like jeans. It's I more am- than just the NH. That goes down to like yeah. triple double A. Like, oh, absolutely. I understand. I was a hockey coach. Yeah. They like, yeah. I understand that, you know, the role models you wa- when you were actually watching them walk into the arena. And I, I understand that. But what are the chances that t- we're going to watch them walk into the arena? They always have the camera on them. Yeah. I won't lie. I think I'm, it's going to be a little different this year. Yeah. I think it's just whatever, I, to be honest. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm a really big fan of the suits. I won't lie. But I just—it's a thing of standards for me. That's you know? fine, but that's not. I don't care about. I don't like. I, that's not the argument I'm making, though. But to make the argument that because they're not wearing suits, it's going to cause them to lose, is so mind boggling. Is mind boggling to me, and how you what the justification is there. What were you saying earlier about like ignoring Twitter, and you don't ignore Leafs Twitter? It was on the radio. I, I don't I ignore media. Leafs Twitter. I said I don't ignore Leafs Twitter. Man, man, man. You know what's really funny? One, um, I was double checking, trying to find a tweet about um, about Panarin. I saw an article that was like John Tavares is in phase by people coming into the by having to use the visitors locker room. Sorry, and I was like, man, man, whatever. Um, Daniel, was there anything you wanted to say about the Leafs or the Ducks? Um. <laughs> nothing on the Ducks, I think. Well, one funny thing is uh, they literally have nothing to show right now because they're not in the play-in round. So they would just say flashback to this or they'd have like these multimedia things where like, yeah. you know, John Gibson looks calm and collected, but I don't know what he's calm and collected for right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying Qu- well. Quickly before we go to the Montreal thing, uh, just clarification on last episode. So apparently it's not that the facilities have to be shut down. It's, it is that the facilities are allowed to be open. Players are allowed to skate um, and use the weight rooms, but they are not allowed to bring in external coaches for the team. So example, Barb Underhill uh, in the past, Adam Oates. So again, my stance still does not change. The NHL's owners are being cheap and are hitting a new level. I yeah. just want to clarify it. And then what you mean there is like, yeah, teams themselves cannot do it, but that would still, the option for a player to do it out of pocket is still an option. That's mm-hmm. where the cheapness comes in. Uh, so yeah, so that's nothing else for you, Dan? Um, no, not really. Well, I was excited about the Nick Robertson thing, but you know, that's mm-hmm. still a developing story that we're going to yeah. see. You know, it'd be amazing if he makes a team, but I understand if they want to kind of go the more, 
seasoned approach for pro- playing around. He would be their thirteenth forward for sure. Yeah, I, I, I think, think I think it. he's in, he's at that point now. It's funny that you guys mentioned the experienced guy versus the whole like, younger guy because that's been a big talking point with the Habs, right? Yeah. Um, our bon boss, who Marc Antoine Gunn on the Sportique Athletique podcast, we're talking about that. Of course, the Habs obviously weren't happy with the fact they got rid of other older vets, but um, a really good point was it then opens the spots for the young guys, right? And it, it has been a question that apparently Christian Fallen has a leg game when it comes to getting Montreal's uh, third pair right handed spot as opposed to rather than a Kale Fleury or a Noah Jolson type and get it. It's, it's so frustrating. Uh, it's, just, it's so weird. Um, something else I want to bring up. Somehow, and this is a really, really good thing, uh, Jesper Kotkinemi is making waves. Like, the guy is looking better and better. He's not having any of the BS from the media anymore. He's not the cute, smiley, baby ego we all thought he was. It's so nice to see he's learned, he's learned to ignore the media. And honestly, they had him practicing with Jonathan Druin. Like they had a setup where it was like Lekkonen with um, Lekkonen with Suzuki and having like a shutdown line, and then giving Suzuki, sorry, and then giving not Suzuki, um, Kotkaniemi time with Druin in that, and just using that as like your pure offensive line. And I'm very okay with that. And of course, the top line is all the same as it normally is. It and elevates then- everybody. Yeah, looking well, yummy, you know, ready to be consistent. Jonathan Drouin wants to bounce back. Well, you think of it like this, right? Um, because of guys like Kovalchuk going, it just moves everyone up a bit. Mm-hmm. And if those guys were there, would a Kale Flurry, would Jesperi Kotkinemi even get a sniff at the roster? So it's a bit of a blessing in disguise because even if this is just the exhibition game and three playoff games. It still does something for the kids, even because like you look at you look at Anaheim, right? Mm-hmm. They're not going to be. They haven't played hockey since the shutdown. They won't play again until next season, which is December, January time. Also, guys, long time. guess who's on the ice finally? Uh, who? Brett Kulak's here. Uh, He's back. <laughs> He's back. And Xavier Ouellet. Cat, those were the two Lavelle guys. Junior veteran. Those were the two guys that hadn't reported, right? Uh, mm-hmm. as, as well as Max Domi. Yes. Oh, and Max is back as well. How did I Max forget that? Back. Ready uh, to go. Quickly, back, Daniel, for you. Um, Robertson remains. This is from CJ. Uh, Robertson remains part of the Leafs' third line with Pierre Engvall, an, with Pierre Engvall an extra. A good sign for the 18-year-old at this stage of training camp. I'm excited. And uh, also breaking news. Um, the Pennsylvania Department of Health has announced that Toronto that today it will not allow the Toronto Blue Jays to play their short in 2020 season in Pittsburgh. Really? Yeah. Oh man. Oh boy. Don't they Yellow. have is it like the Pirates or something? Don't yeah, but they were going to yeah, but they were going to somehow work that out. That was oh. worked out. I guess they're going to be um, playing back in Dunedin. And you said Cam, what did you say about Cam Neely with Pasternak and that, and Kasha? That he um, wished they were doing better? Says he wishes there had been some different decisions made by Pasternak and Kasha when it came to the weeks leading into the Bruins' return to play camp. And apparently they won't practice with teammates until they're in the bubble. Yes. From, uh, yes, from yes. Joe Haggerty. Um, I just see Sarah Valley um, re, like retweeting Fluto okay. Shizawa. From the athletic senior writer, that's a great okay. name. Um, I think that's that's everything. Yes, um, it we're is. We're looking, we're scrolling. That's wicked, man. From Mike, man, the Jays just can't catch a break. This is brutal. Maybe Montreal will have him. Just you just have to change back to the. I mean, back the. Oh, they can't. They can't. The the federal government. Oh, yeah. Federal was it? Yeah, yeah. That's true. I'll make an exception. It's because it's Toronto that, that uh, the boys are like, yeah, no, we don't want that. Yeah. Um, I think that is everything. Oh, yeah, Romanov uh, can't come, can't quarantine in the bubble, which I don't know how they thought they were going to get away with that. But um, that's everything, I think. Um, I'm trying to check Twitter. It's not loading, though. All right. No, there's nothing else. Well, lads. Long episode. Done. Thought it would be a shorter episode. Freaking was it? It was nearly two hours. Fantastic. You listening. We love you. 
if you enjoyed this episode, there's plenty of ways you can support the show. Uh, you can always go subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to my channel about the Habs while you're over there. Um, experience, you know, visual experience and all that kind of stuff. You can check out all three of our socials. Those will be in the links to the podcast or if you're listening to it. Um, check out the show's Instagram as well as its Facebook to get the discussion, hockey discussion going. Um, shout out to Voice Ed, continuous great platform for the show to grow. If you're listening on iTunes and all that kind of stuff, or it's a, it's a podcast app now, isn't it? Mm-hmm. has been for like two years. Um, mm-hmm. Leave a five-star rating. It helps grow the show. Leave a review. Who do you think should be a finalist for the heart? And why it shouldn't be Dreisaitl? That's it.